Okay, today we're going to be talking about the Preferences menu in Pencil 2D uh, version 6.5. So we go down to Edit, scroll down to Preferences, or Alt P. Now in your Preferences, you have five tabs, uh, five categories on your left hand side of the screen under preferences they are categorized as general files timeline tools and shortcuts so we're looking at general right now you can choose your language I chose English and at the bottom you have window opacity so if you're tracing something that uh, tracing a window that's beneath the 2d window you can just scroll it down Okay. Now appearance, you have shadows, so you look like this. You see a shadow shows up around your canvas. Uh, cursor tools. Uh, go to. So right now it's just a plus, but if I hit tool cursor, it's going to show me the cursor I'm currently working with. When you hit dotted cursor. A circle of dots surround your cursor. And if you don't want that, you just uncheck that. Now in the background, you can choose to have alpha, white, gray, dotted, or paper filter. Now under canvas, there's anti-aliasing for your canvas. That's that there. That's with anti-aliasing on. And if I turn it off, I usually leave it on. Okay, vector smoothing. I go to the vector layer. It's currently up high, so so that's just the intensity of the smoothing that you want to apply. Okay, tablet high resolution position. So it does move a little faster with that. Okay. Check that. And underneath that, you have enable grid and your settings for your grid. So if I enable that, or you hit G to enable the grid. You see, I got my grid 30 by 30, but you can always adjust this. Let's say 100. You can see the difference there. Now make this 100. And there you go. These settings here are only for this display button here. It's only for this one here. So you can choose to change those settings there. The top one is for your outer uh, margin there. This one's for your inner margin. And these are for your to show your safe area labels if you wanted to check that or you uncheck it to not show it. And also advanced your cache frame number. I got it at 20. Uh, I may leave it there. Now on to files. Now this is pretty handy here. You can choose to ask for these uh, startup settings as soon as you open Pencil 2D. I've already set two of them. I have one resolution for thumbnails, so as soon as I open this, it will uh, already be preset for me to make thumbnails of my drawings or animate thumbnails. It's already set for that. 
and standard resolution um, where I will regularly do my animating on. So I already have those settings uh, made up there. You can choose to add more presets by hitting those, or you choose to delete some. Oops. Oh well. <laughs> or you choose to hit those at like that. Um, okay. You got enable auto save. And it, this would be pretty handy if you had this enabled because Pencil 2D will um, crash on you without warning if you're not careful. So it's always good to have an uh, auto save on. And you can modify the number of modifications before auto saving. So let's say you make 100 different changes before the next auto save. So it can be save periodically based on the number of modifications you have down here. Let's go to timeline. The timeline length, you can change this to a thousand or whatever number you want. And this would be a good idea to do if you know how long your scene is going to be in frame so you can adjust that. You have your short scrub so if you hit this, let's talk about this on the timeline. So if I hit this, it'll make it longer. If I hit it again, it'll make it short. Or you can just double click on the scrub. Okay, when drawing on an empty frame, you can choose to create a new blank keyframe. So if I go over here, I'm on an empty frame here. So if I just draw, it automatically creates a new keyframe when I draw a blank one. Okay, now you can choose to duplicate previous frame when I draw on an empty frame here. So let's do this and so it should have copied it because if I delete this one, see it was duplicated. So, okay. And keep drawing on the previous keyframe. So if I go over here, any changes I make on this empty frame will automatically be dragged over to the previous frame or the recent frame there. So if I do this, then add a frame. You see the changes went to the previous frame. So it's up to you on uh, what kind of option you want when drawing on the empty keyframe. I usually, let's see, I'll probably choose this one. Create a new blank keyframe. Okay, your flip and roll. Uh, these go for, these are uh, referring to your flip in between and your flip rolling. I've already had them, uh, short keys added to them. My flip in between would be Alt A and my flip rolling would be Alt X. So if I hit Alt X, let's give it a, let's give it these two frames. So if I hit Alt X, it's letting me roll between my drawings. And you can choose the maximum number of drawings it can roll through by bumping up the number. So you roll through six drawings if you want to, or just three at a time. That's the lowest number you can go to. Okay, so you would decrease this number if you want to make your flips faster. So if I hit Alt X, see how fast it's moving. But if I want to slow up the flip rolls, I will bump it up. And this should slow down my flip rolls. Okay, as you see, it's flipping, flip rolling the drawings a lot slower since I bumped up the number. So 
you bumped up you bump up the number to slow down your flip roll and you bring this down to make it faster okay now flip in between let's go to this one in the middle so if I hit alt a it goes to this one so it'll go to three four five and then back to four so So the same as the uh, flip roll duration, you can pull the number up some to make it slower. So you can see, or you can drag it down to make it faster. Okay, sound scrubbing. I may deal with audio in another tutorial as far as Pencil 2D because I'm still reviewing how Pencil 2D operates with sound so that just had to be in a separate tutorial by itself. Layer visibility so this uh, icon is black all the layers are visible uh, regardless of opacity uh, if I hit this button again, it's gray. So as you see, the only the selected layer will have the highest opacity, and the rest of them will have lower opacity based on based on the number that's put here. So right now it's a 63 percent. So now the rough layer or any other layer that's not the selected layer will be the opacity would be lowered by 63%. So if I move this up and down, see it's invisible. If I move it up, it's 100. And again, this can be adjusted uh, in startup. So all these options will be by default in startup. And you can always go back in and adjust these settings. Now into tools, in your brush tool you have use quick sizing. That's basically holding down control on your keyboard and dragging with your mouse. Your move tool, uh, rotation snap increment by 15 degrees. So that would be control, I believe. Uh, I believe it's holding alt with the hand tool that's right so it's moving at 15 degree increments if I want to bump this number up say at 180 degrees no wait a minute this is rotation snap increment so this doesn't affect holding down alt and dragging with the hand tool that doesn't affect that what you do is you go to view and reset the zoom and rotate there now let's talk about these rotate clockwise and rotate anti-clockwise so you hit um, these buttons here so it's moving by 15 increments right now because I haven't, uh, I'm guessing because I haven't saved the settings yet or closed it. Let me see something here. Let's go to this, this, move tool. Control mm, that doesn't affect that either. Okay, rotation snap increment. I believe it's supposed to affect um, your clockwise and counterclockwise, but I could be wrong, so I'm still 
experimenting more about this, but basically it's supposed to adjust your rotation snap uh, by increments of whatever number is down here. So you are welcome to play with that uh, when you get the chance. And these are all my shortcuts. Every feature will have a shortcut key to them. Your exports, your imports, flip rolling, vertical flip, uh, my tools, my zooms, toggling between windows, different window panels, um, set to zoom. I haven't done any of these and I'm not planning to because I don't need them right now. But if you wanted to, you could set shortcut keys to these different types of zooms to make it easier for you to zoom in and out without having to drag the mouse or anything like that. But yeah, that's basically it. What you would do is, let's say Smudge Tool is Alt-D, so you come down here. You would simply type in a shortcut key, so I type in P, and there you go. So P would be my Smudge Tool. And you can just save it or load a new, uh, yeah, save your shortcut key presets in a file. But usually I don't, so, and you can load a shortcut key preset if you wanted to, so you can do that. Or you can restore default shortcuts if uh, something's wrong and it's not working or you're just not satisfied with the shortcut keys you already made you can always restore default shortcuts and that's pretty much it for the presets here okay if you enjoyed this video like comment and subscribe I'm still uploading videos and on days when I'm not uploading a video I will upload posts so make sure to check out the communities tab or hit the bell icon to receive those notifications for those posts. This is DJS Animation signing out. Thanks for watching.